Hi, this is Melissa with Web of Creativity, and I, this video is on my Fake Pocket 2.0 using the Graphic 45 World Fair collection. And this video is going to show you how um, I, the page constructions and um, matting the pages. So you can follow along on the tutorial um, on my blog at www.webofcreativity.net. Uh, the, the, this video doesn't show you how to cover the covers. Um, that's in the tutorial and a lot of my videos shows you how to cover a mini album. So this video is only focused on the page construction and the matting. So let me go through this real quick. I do have a preview video of this album already up. but um, So there's two, two pages in this album. Um, th this is one set. I'm calling this a set for two different page styles. So there's six pages total. And this one is not um, fully matted yet. So we have uh, the fake pocket section right here, and I forgot to put the tags back in here. So this opens up as a, uh, your other fake pocket section for your tags, and then this section right here for your tag. This flips up. Now the directions um, in the tutorial, because I'm matting it with some half mats or um, some sections right here. Uh, the tutorial is going to have full mat sizes, so if you don't want to do accent pieces with um, a cutout, then you don't have to. You can do a full mat. The mats also are, if you don't have the border or you're using something else, um, a different punch or you're just rounding the corners and having a flat punch, um, flat surface, that mat's going to be determined by just with no punch. So you just take into consideration how much your punch eats, eats out, out, of, out of the paper. Okay. Um, but I'll have the directions for both a full size mat and then just these partial pieces that I have. So this opens here full section for a photo and then we have these three flaps I call triple flaps for your photos so this has a lot of room for your photos in here um, a big large tag here and then we have our um, our last section of our fake pocket. So this opens and it also pulls down and here's your tag. All right. Um, again, the video, we're gonna start with uh, page construction, um, matting and, and attaching the pages to the album and how to attach these two pages together. So that's uh, what this video is about. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to be working on page one with the binding at, um, extension to it. So this is the first flap and two other flaps. You flip it over. We have this flap. This flap opens and then we have these three pieces. Now I already did all of my cutting um, and scoring. I'm just going to show you how to put everything together. Um, I'm going to start off with these die cut pieces um, and how I did those. I used a Spellbinders card creator, A2 bracket border in one, borders one, not in one. And they have all these um, pieces to choose from. So 
So we have three thick pieces. And I chose this one. And then um, there's four of these. One of them's just a, I don't, must be in my other room, is just a plain um, cut piece. These three have uh, designs on them. So I did the design with the, the dots. And what you do is you just tape them together and then run it through your machine to get this design. Let me see if I can just, there we go. You can see the, the dotted edge. And then this piece right here and you just tape them together onto your paper to get this look. And then I have flaps with just the dotted look. Alright, so all my, all the cutting, the cutting guide and the scoring guide is all on the tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to put it together. Here's the base page with three score lines. We got two, two small ones here for the binding area and then one here. And then I take my bone folder to do some folding. Now with my paper that I have, I have one textured side and one flat side. So just decide which side you want up. So I'm going to have the flat side up. I'm going to go ahead and do my first scored edge and I'm going to taper the corners. And then I'm going to fold the second one the same direction. And then this one in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and fold so they're all going in one direction. I'm going to turn it over and this is our front. So we're going to take our largest flat piece with the decorative edge. And we're going to fold our tab up and I'm going to go ahead and taper the corners and add my tape to it. And then take this edge and fold it. And there's my flap. So I'm just I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the bottom edge. I always like to place it first before attaching it to get an idea of where it's going to go. And then... So that's our first attachment, is our large flap. So then I'm going to open it up, and this is where we're going to be working, right here, with these two pieces. Now how I did these, because there is a score line, is I scored it first and then I measured from here to here and put my center point so I can put my die piece at that center point. So it's not going to be centered on the whole piece, just um, that section because this is our tab. So go ahead and fold on your tab line. And we're going to taper these corners too. And 
put our tape on them. Okay, and we're going to attach them so they're mirrored image. Again, I like to place it to see where it's going to go before um, attaching, and I might need trimming is also the reason. And I don't need any trimming. It looks perfect. I will have a little bit of a um, bottom spacing, so it's not going to go flush to the bottom, just about an eighth of an inch maybe, or not. Uh, you can have it a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to turn this sideways so I can see my edge. And so there's my spacing at the bottom. And for this one, I can just line up and then and then attach. So I want it to be flush with that edge. These remind me of saloon doors. Alright, there's that flap. And then we're going to go ahead and do the back side. So we're going to attach some flaps here and then a piece here. So I'm going to take the bigger piece Paper, the corners and I know it's going to run out of tape so I'm another roll Let's... all right and with this one I'm going to turn sideways to attach and use my Tim Holtz ruler uh, the reason why I use this one is it has that zero center point right in the middle. So it makes it a lot easier to find out where I'm placing my piece because I'm going to be placing it in the middle. So I don't want it flush with that score line. I'm going to go up just a little bit, a hair over it, um, in front of it, not over it. So... Uh, so it doesn't catch when it closes. I got my center. And let's see if I can get a close up of how. Oops. Technical difficulties. Let's go back. Can you see that score line is right there? It does not want to. So it's just a little bit before that. So that's how it goes. All right, so now we have these three guys. So we're going to go ahead and fold on the tab. And put our tape down. Okay. Now I'm going to place my top 
tab first flush with this left edge and it's going to leave a little bit of space on this side so it doesn't catch when it closes. I'm going to turn this upside down so I can be flush with the top edge and it's easier to see. So again, flush with the top and left edge, and then I have that space. You see that space right there? A little bit of a gap. So your uh, flaps don't uh, catch. All right, next I'm gonna attach the bottom one a fourth of an inch from the bottom, from the tip point. So I'm going to take my ruler and measure so I know where my fourth inch line is for my tip. I'm going to go ahead and do flush with this edge right there. There we go. My next one is an odd number. It is two and three eighths. Make sure that's what I want. Yeah, two and three eighths. So both of these are going to be two three eighths showing. And this line right here is the three eighths. So just from the tip. I know where the tip's going to go. Flush with the left side. And there we have our three pieces. And that's our page. So that's going to go folded that way. This is our binding and this is our flap for our, our page two. All right. That's it for page one. All right, time to move on to page two. Um, this page one, this one's page two. It uh, has three flaps in the front. Um, this is a pocket. This is what's going to attach to page one. We made this little flap here. This is the binding section and this is a flap. That's where your pocket slides right on to. So, so pocket for tag. Then we flip this over, and we have this flap and this flap, and then the two tags that go in there. So um, I cut all my pieces and scored everything and. Um, used my die cut for the um, end pieces and all the directions are on my tutorial on how to cut and score everything so we're going to start with the single sheet base page and then the long green page so we're going to go ahead and fold on the score lines for the tab. And taper the corners. I'm going to go ahead and add tape. Our tabs. We're going to attach this piece on the left edge, flush to the left edge. 
So I'm going to go ahead and turn that so I can see this edge to, to place it. Again, I want it flush with that edge and flush to the top and bottom. There we go. I use my bone folder to give it a good stick on that tab. And with the flaps, I used the um, Spellbinders die with the circles on all three ends. So we're going to go ahead and fold on the score line and taper the corners on all three pieces. Now we're going to attach these just like we did on page one and pull up page one on the inside. I always started with the top page flush to the top and then this, uh, then did the last page uh, fourth from the bottom. So we're going to do the same thing with, with this page. So we're going to start off with attaching the top flush. So I'm going to turn my page upside down so I can see it better. Make sure both sides are even. And then we're going to attach the bottom piece next, um, a fourth from the bottom, uh, measured to the tip. So I'm putting my ruler a fourth from the bottom and then make sure I have my edge flush with the edge. And my second piece is going to be, I always check, but it's going to be two and three eighth inches. And I measure to make sure both of these flaps are two and three eighth inches showing. And I'm gonna put my tip at the end of the ruler and then it's going to be flush with the edge. It's just a, a hair off, but you can't tell. Alright, so now we're going to move to the back side. Um, both of these edges are done just like on page one's front piece. 
So I took the thicker pe the thicker um, edge die, and then the small one with the dots. Taped them together. Put it on my paper, and ran it through my die cutting machine. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and fold. on the score line, the tab score line of the half inch and taper my edges. And put my, um, this one's gonna get folded the other direction. So we have the tab folding underneath and the flat folding frontwards. So we're going to go ahead and put our tape there on our tab. And this one's the same way. So we're going to attach the first one flush to the bottom, like so. There we go. And the next one's going to get attached one inch. And turn this sideways one inch up. And so I can use the ruler as a guide along with the edge of the paper so I don't get it crooked. And it looks straight. It's also upside down. All right, I took this off and um, tore my paper, but a pattern paper is gonna go over top of it, so I'm not worried about it. So again, I'm gonna try this again, but the right way, and attach it one inch up. All right, I'm gonna turn this so I can get a good look. There we go. Now that's right. So that's our page two. Okay, moving on. Uh, this section of the video is going to be uh, matting the pages and the placement for the magnets. So I already cut everything and inked it and put tape on the pieces that need to be taped. The rest I'm going to use my uh, ATG gun to attach my papers. Um, the tutorial, I, I have these matted in a certain way. Uh, the tutorial is going to have a full uh, matting um, dimensions on there. So if you just want to do a full mat and not a decorative mat as I'm doing, um, then you'll have that option. So I'll have it both ways. The way that I'm matting and all the measurements for that and then the way that you can just mat a full mat. Um, the full mat doesn't take into consider the, the, this piece right here. So if you just want to do a uh, flat edge, round corners, or whatever kind of punch you have, you have to take that into consideration. Um, 
So that's that. Then the magnets that I used, these are uh, one fourth inch basic gray magnets. They have usually have a um, plus or a minus sign on one side for the sticker. And then I'm using um, discs, these magnetic discs. These are, I think, are three fourth inch. Yeah, three fourth inch. They're super thin. That's why I like them. But these aren't um, magnets. They're just you, your magnet will stick on them. So that's why I use them. So it's going to cut down on uh, the amount of magnets that you're going to use because these little disc things are super, super cheap. I think I paid three dollars for a hundred of them or something like that. So these are really super cheap. Um, the basic gray magnets aren't aren't as cheap. It, you get um, a package of the, these little ones are five or six dollars and then you have a, a half inch side um, size that you can get as well. Uh, here's the one fourth inch and then the half inch ones. I like the basic gray ones because they are thin. You can get thicker magnets. Um, they're really strong, thicker magnets. I have these guys. Um, I think they're a little bit thicker. And these also, um, these are super strong, but you can tell the difference in the size of them. The basic gray is thinner, and that's why I like to use the basic gray magnets. But again, they are kind of more expensive than other magnets that you can get um, in bulk. So it's up to you on what, what you want. The other ones work fine. Again, they're just a little bit thicker. Um, I think that's all I'm going to go through. We're going to... Um, all the measurements for magnet placement is on the tutorial as well, and... Um, I think that's it. I think we're ready to go. So we're going to attach our first magnet. So this front page gets three of the fourth inch magnets and two of the discs. And we're going to start with... Um, and you have to be careful with the Tim Holtz ruler because it has a metal edge. So if you are moving your ruler around and you can't find your magnet, look on your ruler. <laughs> That's just a tip. Okay, we're going to go ahead and measure the first part. Um, it's about two and one fourth over, roughly, and then two and a half up. So these are just rough estimates. Um, you always want to, to check your placement before you actually attach your magnet. But as long as it's going to be where your mat's going to be, that's what you're looking for. You want it so it's not on the edge of your mat. You want it more um, so a lot of your paper is going to cover that. So that's a good placement. And then I'm going to have a magnet for my flap. So even though I do have a measurement for where this goes, you can always just eyeball it. Um, place all your magnets down to see where you're going to want to put them and then go ahead and put tape over them. And these are going to break my nails. These are hard to get apart. Sometimes the... Um, sticker sticks to the other one as well so just give me a sec okay uh, I want them relatively in the same area
So I'm going to move it a little bit around. Again, I'm just eyeballing it, but I do want it close to the same area um, of where I'm going to put it. So there we go. Now with this one, it, it, it it's attached to this front part. Um, so what we're going to do is we can take this off and lift this up, and now we have static attaching it. <laughs> um, so now we know where where to to put that. I'm going to move it a little. No, that looks good. That looks good right there. So then we're just going to use our tape to tape it down. I'm going to take, um, I think I'm going to take my full one inch piece. And I'm going to just run my fingernail around the edge of it. With this one, I'm going to Attach that one first. So you can either run a piece of tape over it or attach it on the bottom of the tape and then put it on there. It, it either way will work. And it doesn't matter if you are top to bottom diagonal as long as you get it stuck to your paper. One last one. Now I did not double check to make sure my paper was going to cover this. So let's check to see. Okay. That is good. And because it's close to this top, I'm going to tape it sideways. All right. So again, front section too close to this middle line, uh, more closer to this middle line than the outline. And then we have the two discs uh, attached here. There we go. Um, Alright, so for my first mat I used, I used for this album the Spellbinders die, A2 bracket border one. Uh, for this mat, I used just the plain one to give me the cut with no um, indentions on it. So this looks good, just flush to the sides. And I put tape on this. I'm also going to use some glue for um, the die cut edge so we don't get any uh, anything stuck underneath it to rip the paper. So I'm going to glue those tips down. So can you see the glue that I put along the edges here? And then I'm going to remove my tape from my magnet. And this is flush on both sides. And you can't tell where the magnet is. So what I got here is, um, I cut this from the paper collection, so I'm going to just add it, you know, as a little accent piece. So I'm just going to use my ATG gun, or glider, I call it a gun, but it's a glider. So the difference is I had tape on this piece because there was a thicker magnet on them. The thin discs 
I'm just going to use my ATG to attach my paper, but with a thicker magnet like that, I, I prefer to tape my paper. And I should have run a line of ATG on here, and I didn't think of it. Um, so this, I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to eyeball. You know, the whole hard, hardest decisions is placement of your embellishments. So now a little picture can go over here in this section or... So the top section here, I did um, two mats to go on top of each other. Uh, this one I did the a dot border. Um, can you see the dots on there? So I have, this is the dots, and then this is a straight edge. So I'm going to add ATG and then glue to again to the tips, or to the edge. doesn't take long for the glue to get stuck but I guess that's why it's called quick drying glue I'm just trying to figure out where I want to place it. I think I'm going to place it high. Yeah. Now this one has um, like uh, some dots on it and they go through the paper so I'm trying not to put the glue where the dots are and just do a real real thin um, edge. I don't know if you can see the glue on that or not. Oh, and then I think I'm just going to add a little glue to the middle. Um, just getting an idea of where I want to put it. Get those edges down. This is a uh, four by six um, out of the collection, out of the paper. I just cut it out. I 
And again, just going to put some glue on the edge. I can make it kind of like centered from that. I ink the edges using um, vintage photo. All right, I'm going to want this centered. So I'm going to turn this sideways and use my ruler to get an idea of where I want to put the, to center it. Got one, one part down, flip over. For this section, I did like a full mat for the front and then a half mat on the back. So let's go ahead and attach. I don't think it mattered which piece. I think they're identical. Yep, they are. All right. Okay. I'm going to attach. Just taking the tape off the back if I'm a little off camera. attach these and if you're wondering why um, where the fake pocket is this is one of them there's two tags that are gonna go slip right down here to make this look like a pocket and then it opens up instead of being attached like a pocket and the same way with this piece right here is um, a fake pocket too where it tag slips down right there And then this big mat right here is going to go like that. So I added tape. I'm going to also add a couple of lines of my ATG um, and then remove my tape on my discs. 
I'm just going to make an X on my big mat and then make, add a couple of little ones on the sides. Place it even. Voila! All right. Um, now for this gets a big mat, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, this right here gets a couple of uh, discs. So we know where our magnets are. So the only thing, um, I think what I'm going to do for these, I'm going to give it a shot. If it don't work, it don't work. I'm going to put my ATG on there. And see if I can get it to stick to this page. We'll give it a shot. For placement and it worked. Look at that. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. So it guarantees where the placement's gonna be. Just find in the center of that magnet. There we go. I'm using two because it's um you can put more than one mat, one tag in this fake pocket. So I want to want to double up on the two pieces as a precaution. I don't want you to make a couple of tags and then it not shut because of the thickness. So we're going to give it an extra extra disc to hold it. Now, I didn't put any tape on here. I'm going to use my ATG, but run a few diagonal lines um, across it. Up. I'm going to turn this sideways so I can see all my edges more clearly. Okay. And now we have front front page. Time for the back. We are attaching um, magnet to this side and this side. And we're not doing this side because my magnet placement, I have my paper is going to go over here and it's not going to be able to cover it. So I'm going to put it on this side and this side. Um, so I'm going to have a disc on this side. And let's see if I can pry off one of these magnets. Um, okay, so I'm going to want it about in the middle, I think. So it looks like a good place for it. Um, yep, that looks like a good place for it. So we're going to go ahead and attach this down. Keep my finger on it. Um, some of these magnets have the stickers on them if they haven't torn off and then has a little bit of adhesive on the back of it. So I'm just tearing off that sticker and it doesn't hold very well. Um, so I would I'd put an extra piece of tape on there, which is what I'm going to do. But I'm going to do the same trick. I'm going to go ahead and put my adhesive on there, my ATG, 
get it about center and shut it. There we go. And put a piece of tape over it. Okay, so this front piece Uh, as you've seen in this piece, this is a solid piece, this background piece. Well, to save paper, um, I had a strip of paper that wasn't big enough, but I cut it in half to be my background. So I'm going to attach this to the back side of my, my paper and then attach it there. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm just going to run a piece, my ATG on the edge. And we're going to place it about, I'm eyeballing this, but it, oh, I wanted it about a fourth of an inch from the tip. Do the same thing to this one. going to attach. So my the small piece is the accent. This has this is the dotted. I did a dotted one and then this red is a solid one. to turn it sideways to get a better view. I'm going to attach right there. And then I took a piece of the collection and cut out these cute uh, hot air balloons. I'm going to want these centered, so I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler. You see the center mark, the zero, to get an idea of uh, my placement. These are about four inches. And then I have um, a partial mat for the flap. I'm just taking the tape off. Adding my glue to the edge. I'm going to turn this sideways so I can line up the two middle points. Then I got this gorgeous paper right here. I love the hot air balloons and the colors. I'm going to run um, my ATG
Now for the big mats, um, I rounded the corners, uh, one fourth inch corner rounder. All right, the inside, we have this big mat right here. Um, I used a stamp, I got the stamps for this paper collection. And used it for accent pieces on these big, big mats right here. So they have some really cute, I have an Eiffel Tower that I'm going to use. And then the hot air balloon. This is what the um, Be Yourself. So the, it comes with some really good stamps. That's the stamp collection I bought. There's like three stamp collections that you can get. So for this guy, I made... Um, Again, saving paper, I cut a, I didn't have a long enough piece. So I'm gonna, looks good, don't it? I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna use this line as a guide. So let me go ahead and attach a little accent here. Using this Imagine as a line so I don't have to use my ruler. Looks good. For this piece, I um, angled, I cut the corners with my angle punch. Then I'll do one more in the middle with my angle punch. So I love these memory keeper punches. Um, this is angle and photo. It just gives it a little extra. I know I'm, I have this upside down, but it's closer to me so I can see. I think I'm going to use my ruler again to, um, to check to make sure I'm in the center. Alright, what I was doing was checking to make sure this paper is not on the right side of that this score line. I want to make sure this flap still flaps down. Okay. Next we have our magnet placements for our flaps. So this requires three of the discs and three of your magnets. So we'll do um Placing our magnet, we want, uh, these are half matted pages, so I have a half mat, so I want to make sure my magnet stays in this, ha in this section, that it's going to be covered. So I'm going to, it has tape on it. So I'm just checking to make sure um, that the placement of it is going to be high, higher than the mat line is going to be. 
and um, it looks like that is going to be perfect right there. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that down. And I'm using a uh, half inch tape. I'm going to want it about the same spot. You always check your area. You want to make sure it's in a good spot. And you can always use the, um, the saying um, measure twice, cut once. It applies into scrapbooking too. Add it about here. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so now that our all our magnet placements are intact, and I forgot to add tape. have tapes on the backs of all these so um, I used the straight edge for the mats since the uh, dotted edge is used for the page itself and then I'm going to put some glue on my edge
Okay, now we're going to do the inside. We're just going to uh, use the ATG and the glue for this one. And I have half mats for this one as well. All right, the next part is our mats. These are full-size mats for here. And I rounded, um, rounded the corners. There we go. Now plenty of room right here for a photo, here for a photo. You can do little photos or just leave it as decoration and then put your photos inside. So with the these being magnetic shut, none of these flaps get stuck on your paper when it when it closes. So without the magnet, it's gonna, you have to hold it down each time or the corner will um, flip up and um, increase. So now it's all flat. So there we go. All right, moving on. All right, this is page two. We have another set of flaps right at the top in this pocket which attaches to page one and this area over here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do our magnet placement like we did the first one. So we'll get three flat discs and three of our little uh, 1 4 inch magnets. So this is the same, it's the same thing. We have half inch, not half inch, half mats. So we don't have full mats. Um, so we, of course we're going to want them inside the paper. 
Ah, there's is that. Move that around a little bit. That is a little low to where the mat's going to be, but it is thin enough that it's not going to pick that mat up. So that placement is fine. I can raise it up just a little bit more. Oh. Need my tape. Just check in placement. I can feel where the magnet is underneath the paper so I know how far it is from the edge. If you're wondering why I'm doing that. You can do... Um, you know, the ATG and put the adhesive on the magnet or just fill it um, like I was doing. Either or. Okay, let's go ahead and get our pieces down. So I taped the backs of these where on um, for the flats where the magnets go, and I'm going to add some glue to my edge. And give it a good rub where the magnet is and then of course the edge that you put the glue on. We're gonna go ahead and uh, we got our half mats up at the top as well on um, under the flap.
All right, now we're going to go ahead and do the inside. I think in the tutorial I called it the underside of the flap or under the flap. Good. Okay. Now, for this section, I just have a strip that I cut um, to go there because I'll have a tag that's going to go and cover it. So you don't have to mat it. Um, put a strip if you want or nothing at all or do a full mat. More fake pocket pages. Now with this, I'm using um, no, I'm not using any of the discs. I'm using uh, four of the magnets. So I'm doing that because it's going through more paper and then a tag. So I want to make sure it gets stuck pretty good. So I'm using two full magnets and not um, any of the discs. So. All right, so magnet placement will be we're going to make it about two and one fourth inches from the left edge. Oh. And about three fourth inches from the score line. So we're going to have it right there and our magnet on the other side is there so it shouldn't interfere with this side. So this is where we're going to place it. And then we're going to take that guy and see if we can Put adhesive on it and close it. And hold it down. There we go. Let's put another piece of tape. All right, let's do the same thing to the top. Try that again. Okay. So we're going to do about three fourths up, two and one fourth over. Of course. I'll get my tape ready first. <sighs> This has the tape side already on it. If I can get the paper off. There we go. Okay. Oh, 
for the top, oh, I got um, this from the paper collection. I'm just going to put it and attach right about there. Side. I already put my tape on my inside piece then I'm going to glue my edge okay rub real good where that magnet is. Um, Alright, this piece, what I did for this is I um, I wanted it so when you close this it has that border right uh, to give it a nice border look. This piece is not straight. Add some more. Let's try that again. There we go. All right. So I want that border. See where that's gonna place my top. Uh, about a fourth from the top. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put my ATG and my glue. Wipe some of that glue off and put some there. I think what I'm going to do is hold this even and then close it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Um, we can go ahead and open and attach my mats like so. We're almost done. added tape to this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some more ATG to it. strip right here I don't know if I want it low or in the middle low or I think, mm, I think in the 
make up my mind. I'm not good at making up my mind. I'm going to let it go at low. I think that's going to work. All right. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing I did with this one. That looks good. Let's see if I can make this come in. Yeah, so that looks good. And then it just opens up. Oh, so I just need to attach my pages and um, get my mats together. So, um, tags together. Okay, now that we have all our pages put together and matted, we're going to, um, I'm going to show you how to attach these two pages together. So your main page has two uh, sections to it. So we have this, this section that's a solid section. Um, that is our binding that attaches to our mini album. Then we have this part right here with the tapered corners. That is um, our pocket attachment. So what we have is we made our pocket go all the way through. So we're gonna slide it on. There we go, we're gonna slide it on and attach it. Uh, we're going to want some room between the score line and this page so the page doesn't get stuck when you're folding it over. So um, I use tape. You can use glue. If you use glue, you have a little bit of wiggle room. I use tape. What I do is just take off one side of the tape first and then put the page on. Remove the tape from the other side using... Um, my craft knife to get the tape up. So that's what we're going to do. So I took the tape off of the front edge. We're going to slide this on. And we're going to make sure we have some room. Um, 
because we want to make sure to, to shut the page. So we want a, a nice flow so it doesn't catch. So it doesn't feel like it's catching. And that's what we want. So let's see if I can uh, get that to zoom in. So you can see that spot space right there. So none of those pages gets caught. All right, for the back side, so it looks real even right there. So if I can keep that from moving, I'm just going to go in with my um, craft knife to get that tape pulled up. So there we go. So it's a good, it's a good placement. So I'm just going to pull the tape out. And that didn't move the page. So now I can give it a good rubbing. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can see where that placement is. So you can see I do have a little gap area. So let's see if I can, you can see that area right there. And now we have your two pages connected. All right, the next part will be connecting these to the book. All right, next we have is um, attaching the pages to the cover. Now, this video doesn't show you how to cover your mini album. The directions are in the tutorial. I have several videos on uh, covering an, an album. So it's the same, same way. Uh, but all the measurements and paper measurements are, and chipboard measurements are on the tutorial. So we have six pages, three sets. So my other sets aren't um, matted yet, but I do have them all attached. So they're all ready to go ahead and be attached into the album. Um, I do have opposite colors is what I did. So, and the same thing with the second page. All right, so attaching, you need to know where you're lines are for your spine and what I did to start off with is I drew a very faint line um, I'm not sure if you can see it it's very faint it's it's right along here and it's um, I measured from the spine edge, the spine edge out three eighths of an inch, I mean a fourth of an inch. So you can see my little mark right there. And then I did the same thing to the top and then drew a very faint line so I can see where my page is going to go. So when I place my page on the line, I'm going to use the orange line. So when I place it, I don't place this at the top and then the blue at the bottom. You want to follow that orange line so your, your page isn't crooked. So when we go down, I'm going to turn it. It's easier to see um, turning your page sideways. So I do have tape on there. I am going to place it before I take the tape off to get an idea of where I want to, where I want to put it. So um, I'm going to find my line and where my orange is so I have an idea of where I'm going to set that and I'm going to set it a little bit um, you can't see that very well it's going to be set about an eighth of an inch from the blue 
So let me see if I can measure that real quick. See what I got. I think it's a fourth of an inch from the edge. Yeah, so it's gonna be a fourth of an inch from the edge of where we're gonna see it. I'm gonna eyeball it. But I think I got that on where I wanna put it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off. And then take your time because you don't want anything to be crooked. So I'm just, I, I have this flat almost. So only the edge touches and the tape doesn't so I can give them some wiggle room and then I lay the page down. So it's flat and then lay the page down. Because I have messed up attaching pages several times. So I'm going to find my line with my orange and then um, my line's crooked. I mean, my page is crooked. And then let it go. Following to make sure it's straight. So I set it down very gently. So it's barely attached right now. I haven't burnished it, just checking to make sure my lines are straight. Because once you burnish, um, it's very hard to get back up. So I did notice it's a little crooked. So I'm just adjusting. And then I'm going to push it down. There we go. So, um, ah, oh, here it is. I'm going to take my um, bone folder and give it a really good press. Okay, so what, what my next step's going to be is the next page. So I'm going to measure the bottom from the orange and I'm going to go 3 eighths of an inch over. I'm turn around and do the same thing to the top. And I'm going to draw a light line. So again, I have my tape holding it flat. This might be a little more challenging since I don't have any of my magnets on. And I'm gonna want to follow the line. And what I'm gonna do, if I can find my magnets, is uh, try and get my page to, to be a little more closed. So it'll be a little more easier to work on. All right, you can do the same thing with the back. If I can get my magnets to <sighs> separate. Technical difficulties. Hopefully, just one's gonna to be enough. So I'm good. I'm gonna just. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and take off my tape. Again, holding it flat so I can roll it. And I'm gonna line up the top and then the bottom. And that's 
going to be fourth inch from the top. Lay that down. Let's open that up. So I can tell it's a little crooked. But I don't think it's going to come up. I think I got it pretty stuck. It's not bad. The top looks even. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Plus, you don't want to um, pick it up too much. I'm just trying to manipulate it a little bit more. If you do have to pick it up, I... Um, I suggest a spatula to dig under and pop it slowly and I would also suggest you adding more tape to it after you did that because that tape will lose its stickiness if um, uh, sorry um, if you have to restick it down Good. What I'm going to do this time is measure, because um, this I did get just a snag for good, you can't tell that much. I'm going to go from the back um, the back spine line and mark one fourth inch from there. And I'm going to just lightly place it at the mark so I can get an idea if I'm going to have enough. I can't see my, oh, there's my mark. Enough space in between the two pages. That looks like I'm going to. It looks like I have a lot of space. I just I placed this page a little too close it looks like um not a problem I'm going to I think I'm going to move it over just a little bit more and give some space to the back I did a practice run to figure out my spacing but you know, sometimes that doesn't always work here's my three-eighths so moving it over to 3 8 and checking that. That looks like it's going to be a little bit more better. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move it to 3 8 and draw a light line. placing my back end on it, on the line. So I'm going to go backwards. Um, let me find my line. So that looks good. That looks good. Alright, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take off my tape. Alright. 
So I do have the middle page is um, not centered, but once you get those um, more matte, it's not matted. So once I get that matting in there and all my tags, it's going to be a little more thicker. Um, then I'm not going to have to worry about it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get that stuck down. All right, and there we go. That's how we get that attached. And um, now I need to cover and add my um, tags to everything. Okay, that's it.